How many times have you started talking to someone and thought, this might actually go somewhere? And then, boom, ghosted, rejected, or left wondering what the hell just happened? Or maybe you've been on a date and halfway through you start thinking, is this the best I can do? Should I keep looking? But what if I told you there's an actual mathematical formula that can tell you exactly when to stop searching and finally pick the one? Sounds crazy? Well, scientists actually figured it out, and today we're going to break it down. Meet Jacob. He's 20 years old, ambitious, yet slightly lost in a fast-changing world. He's in college, working part-time at a coffee shop, and dreaming of a career that will give him freedom, though he's not quite sure which path to take yet. Jacob spends a lot of time on social media, loves memes, listens to self-improvement podcasts, and occasionally downloads and then deletes Tinder. He wants something real, but finding the perfect partner seems harder than choosing a Netflix show. <laughs> so how do you actually find the one? Jacob isn't alone. If you've ever felt like dating today is harder than it should be, you're definitely not the only one. Think about it, your parents probably met at school, work, or maybe through a friend. Their dating pool was small, but that also meant they didn't overthink their choices. Now, you have access to millions of potential matches through Tinder, Bumble, Instagram DMs, Snapchat, and even LinkedIn if you're feeling bold. And yet somehow, it feels even harder to find someone. It's called the paradox of choice. The more options we have, the harder it is to choose. It's the same reason why you can spend 30 minutes scrolling through Netflix, trying to pick a movie only to give up and rewatch something safe. Or why standing in front of a massive fast food menu somehow makes ordering a burger feel like a life or death decision. Now apply that to dating. Unlimited options don't always mean better results. They just make it harder to commit. And dating apps are the perfect example of this. Jacob knows this too well. He's swiping through profiles, but instead of finding someone, he's stuck in an endless loop of maybe. She seems nice, but what if there's someone even better? That thought alone is enough to keep him swiping for hours. And the worst part, the more time he spends looking, the harder it gets to actually choose. So how do you escape this cycle? How do you know when to stop searching and actually commit? Well, lucky for Jacob, and for you, there's actually a mathematical solution to this problem. Alright, so how do you actually solve this mess? Well, mathematicians have been studying this kind of problem for decades, and what they found is something called the secretary problem, which is also known as the marriage problem. Let's put it like this. Imagine you just started dating, and your goal is to find your ideal partner, the person you want to be with long term. One by one, you meet different people. Some are great, some are, well, let's just say not a great match. Now, here's the tricky part. Once you decide not to date someone seriously, that's it. There's no going back. You can't reject someone, date a few more people, and then suddenly say, wait, actually, that third girl was amazing. Let me go back to her. Nope. Once she's gone, she's gone. Mm. But at the same time, you can't just pick the first person who seems decent. Because what if someone way better comes along later? It's a tough situation. Pick too early and you might miss out on someone amazing. Wait too long and you might be left with no good options. This is exactly what the marriage problem tries to solve. In dating, you don't know exactly how many people you'll meet in your life. You have to make a choice without knowing if someone better is still ahead. So what's the solution? How do you maximize your chances of picking the best option? Mathematicians actually found the answer. But let's be honest, if we start breaking down the formulas and equations behind it, this video will get boring real fast. So instead, we'll skip the math and just give you the answer. And here it is. 37%. That's the magic number. If you reject the first 37% of the people you date, then pick the next person who is better than all previous ones, you maximize your chances of ending up with the best possible partner. Sounds weird, right? But statistically, it works. But how do we actually apply this rule in real life? Because let's be real, you don't have a fixed list of people you'll date in your lifetime. Well, that's where time comes into play. 
Instead of counting a fixed number of people, you apply the 37% rule to your dating years. Let's say you want to find your ideal partner by the time you're 30 and you start seriously dating at 20. That gives you a 10-year dating window. 37% of 10 years is 3.7 years. That means for the first 3.7 years you should focus on dating, exploring, and learning, not committing. During this period, you're gathering data, you're figuring out what kind of person you actually want to be with, what works for you, and what definitely doesn't. And here's the rule, once you pass the 37% mark, the first person you meet who is better than all your previous partners, that's the one you should commit to. It sounds weird, but statistically, this gives you the highest chance of picking the best possible person. Of course, this isn't a perfect science. Life is messy. People don't show up in perfect mathematical order. And sometimes you need someone special earlier than expected. But this method isn't about controlling love. It's about making sure you don't settle too early or wait too long. So we've got the math. We've got the strategy. But let's be honest. Dating isn't just numbers. It's emotions and a whole lot of chaos. And sometimes the 37% rule, it can totally backfire. What if you meet someone truly amazing in the first couple of years? According to the rule, you have to reject them because you're still in your data collection phase. So you let them go thinking, I'll find someone even better later. But by the time you hit your 37%, they've moved on. Maybe even married someone else. Ouch. Or what if you reach 37% and realize you've only dated walking red flags? Now you're supposed to pick someone better, but better than what? And worst of all, try explaining this rule to someone you're dating. I like you, but I'm not at 37% yet. Yeah, good luck with that. Does this mean the rule is useless? No, it's a tool, not a law. It helps you think strategically instead of swiping aimlessly. And believe it or not, some people have actually put it to the test in real life. On Reddit, a guy shared a story about dating a girl for several months. Everything was going great until she suddenly broke things off. Her reason? She was testing the 37% rule. She had decided in advance how long she would date before choosing the one. And he was just part of her rejection phase. Imagine hearing that. You're not the one, you're just part of a math experiment. So does this rule actually guarantee love? Not really. Love isn't just numbers, it's luck, chemistry, and sometimes making completely irrational choices that somehow feel right. The real takeaway? Use the 37% rule as a mindset, not a strict formula. Date, learn, grow, and when you meet someone who truly feels right, don't overthink it. So what do you think? Would you trust Matt to pick your perfect partner? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.